A so-called space race is underway to reach the southern pole of the moon, and thus far, India is the first and only country to make history by successfully landing on this challenging lunar terrain. This location is significantly distant from where the six American Apollo missions previously landed on the moon near the equator. Russia also had its lunar mission, Lunar 25, which aimed to land on the southern pole of the moon. However, on August 20th, it lost signal and crashed on the moon's surface, resulting in the mission's failure. Nonetheless, Russia remains determined with more missions in the pipeline. China plans to launch a mission next year. The United States aims to land astronauts on the moon's south pole by 2025. And Japan even plans to land a robotic spacecraft on the moon's south pole in 2029. So, what is it about the southern pole of the moon that is attracting scientists from around the globe? Let's explore this topic further. Instead of providing a fixed answer, let's delve into the possibilities. There are primarily two reasons why countries are keen on lunar exploration. First, since the moon orbits Earth, it is both logical and practical to establish infrastructure on the nearest celestial body before venturing deeper into the uncharted expanses of space. Despite the challenging terrain for landing, the lunar south pole region holds significant appeal for future exploration missions and is considered suitable for a lunar outpost. If this challenging terrain can be conquered, the potential reward could be historic. The presence of ice that can be utilized to extract fuel, oxygen, and drinking water. The moon, which is a hundred times drier than the Sahara Desert, had its water existence confirmed by NASA only in 2020. The permanently shadowed areas on the moon potentially contain ice and valuable materials, making them crucial resources for future explorers. The mountain peaks near the pole receive extended periods of illumination and could be harnessed to provide solar energy for an outpost. Establishing an outpost on the moon would enable scientists to analyze water and other volatile systems dating back to the formation of the solar system, benefits that are considered worthwhile despite the associated risks by agencies worldwide. Second, there's a strong desire to study and advance knowledge in material science. As Earth's closest celestial neighbor, the moon is believed to contain various rare earth elements. If any nation can analyze lunar soil or raw composition, it could determine the presence of these elements, potentially in a manner similar to their distribution on Earth. In the event that unfamiliar elements are indeed discovered on the moon, it could lead to significant scientific advancements and potentially valuable resources for space exploration and utilization in the future. The subsequent step would involve bringing samples back to Earth and studying them to either recreate them artificially or search for substances on Earth that closely resemble those elements. And once we humans achieve substantial success in uncovering or replicating these rare Earth elements, you might wonder how this will benefit a country. Typically, governments won't release these elements into the commercial market immediately. They might first be used to advance military technology, as that can provide a country with a competitive edge. After the military has harnessed the innovation, these elements are gradually introduced into the commercial market in a deliberate and measured manner. This is why military technologies worldwide often surpass what we encounter in the commercial market. And there you have it. The moon race is fueled by two crucial objectives. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more fascinating content. Thanks for watching.